Hi there and welcome. Um, I'm Jill Green and I'm a psychological therapist with the Weir and Dales Community Mental Health Team and I lead the DBT programme based at the Goodall Centre in Bishop Auckland. Okay, so the purpose of this video clip is to introduce you to and guide you through the Distress Tolerance Crisis Survival Skill Distracting with Wise Mind Accepts. And that is as described in Marsha Linehan's second edition of her DBT Skills Training Manual. Now, as you can see on the screen, this video does not constitute DBT therapy and nor is it a substitute for your attendance at a DBT Skills Training Group session. It is, however, intended to provide some support to those of you who are currently engaged in a DBT programme and it can also be used as a revision aid for those of you who may have previously completed DBT um, skills training and you're interested in revisiting some of the skills. In addition to that, um, this video can provide some introductory information about the DBT skill associated with Wise Mind Accepts to those of you who may not have been involved in a DBT programme at all. Um, and at this point, what I would like to, to point out is that if you haven't been involved in a DBT programme so far, um, before you watch any more of this video, I would urge you to gain some familiarity and understanding of what is meant, meant by wise mind. And you'll find that in the core mindfulness skills. Um, wise mind is a critical skill in DBT and it helps us to identify as well as use skillful means so that we're more able to proceed effectively towards our goals and more able to survive that crisis without making things worse. So I really would urge you to become familiar with wise mind before watching any further in this video if you're not already familiar with it. So if you're watching this video and you're not in, D in a DBT programme, but you would like more information about DBT, you could contact your local community mental health team um, and discuss this further with them in terms of the availability of DBT within your area and whether or not this would be an appropriate psychological intervention for you at this time. Okay, so for those of you who are already in a DBT programme, you will be able to access the DBT skills handouts and worksheets from your DBT lead or your team. Some of you may already have the um, handout seven and worksheets associated with this session um, as on the screen. If not, please give us a shout and I'm sure we will be able to, any of your DBT team will be happy to supply them for you. So if you're watching this and you're not in a DBT program, you are able to buy this book online um, and it contains all of the handouts and all of the worksheets for the DBT Skills Training Program. Okay, so before we go any further, um, let me just give you an overview of crisis survival and distraction and what we mean by that. Well, when we distract, when we're using distraction skills, what we're trying to do is to throw our minds off the problem. So we're turning our attention to something else. Um, and the distraction skills work by reducing contact with whatever it is that has set off that distress or reducing contact with the most painful parts of the situation. So they also work by reducing or changing parts of that emotional response that could lead to um, engaging in destructive behaviours. So what we're actually looking at there is when we have those crisis urges, what we want to do when we're trying to survive that crisis, we can use distraction to help us to survive that crisis. Now within distraction, um, there are seven sets of skills um, and what we're going to do is we're going to go through each and every one of them and give you some ideas. It might be helpful if you also have a separate piece of paper at this point because some of these skills, um, when we go into the skill sets, you might want to make particular note of um, and we'll discuss why when we get towards the end of the presentation. So, 
Why is MIND ACCEPTS? Now, ACCEPTS is one of the acronyms that um, is used in DBT. And the seven skills are we're accepting wise mind with activities. So we're distracting with activities, contributing, comparisons, different emotions, with pushing away, with other thoughts and distractions with other sensations. So let's have a look at those in a little bit more detail. So when we're talking um, distracting with activities, this is where we engage in activities that are quite neutral. Um, or they are those activities that actually help us to act opposite to those negative emotions and those crisis behaviours that we're experiencing or the emotions are pushing us towards. So we engage in activities that will help to reduce the impulsive urges and distress. The, the activities are designed then to buy that time between the impulsive urge and the action. Yeah? So we're distracting our attention and... By doing that, we are filling up our short-term memory with non-crisis related thoughts, as well as non-crisis related images and sensations. And that can then directly affect those physiological responses um, that we experience with those emotionally fueled behaviors, as well as reduce the emotional pain that drives those crisis behaviors. So some of the activities that we would be talking about, and there are a whole host and really think about what activities could you engage in. So we could focus on um, our attention on a task that needs to be done. So we're actually getting up and doing something else. Um, we could call a friend, we could take a dog for a walk. There's lots of different activities that we can do. Um, we could make something new from a recipe book because that really does take our attention away from that crisis. Do some gardening, dig a hole, change the bedding clear out a wardrobe or a cupboard drawer. There are many, many different activities that we could engage in. Some of those on the screen you may already do and have access to. Some of them may be new ideas. Some of them you wouldn't think about engaging in whatsoever. But this is about you thinking really, really hard about what activities you could really engage in to help to distract. So then we have distracting with wise mind accepts through contributing. So with contributing, what we're talking about here is contributing to somebody else's well-being because that helps us to refocus our attention from ourselves and onto others as well as focus on our, refocus our, our attention onto what we are able to do for others. This in turn helps to increase a sense of meaning in our lives which can increase our self-esteem and actually make us feel good about ourselves so it brings with it a sense of satisfaction. It distracts our attention away from our own problems, even for a short while. Now, if we think back to the activities when I talked about um, making a new recipe, you could bake a cake and take it to a neighbour. So you're contributing as well as engaging in an activity. If you've cleared out a wardrobe, you could take it to a charity shop. So again, it's contributing to others. So let's have a look at some of the other um, things that we could do under the auspices of contributing. So we could do some volunteer work, we could help a family friend, surprise some, someone with something nice such as a card or a favour, give things away that we don't need anymore, make something nice for someone, there's that cake, um, call or message someone offering words of encouragement, um, do something thoughtful and take things to a charity shop. So there's, again, lots of different things that we can do um, to contribute. And again, make note of those that you might be able to do or you wouldn't do at all. Or what? Or think about some other things that you could engage with to add to your list of contributing um, activities. Now, the next skill is about comparison. So comparison... Um, when we're talking about distracting with comparison, some people find this really difficult. But comparisons help us to refocus our attention away from ourselves to others and their situations. So, again, this can sometimes be a very difficult situation, a very difficult skill to um, take on board, because sometimes when we're comparing ourselves to others and their situations, 
um, it can actually lead to more negative behaviours but we want to turn that round into the positives. In addition we can also compare ourselves to ourselves so we can compare how we are feeling right now or how we are coping right now in comparison to previous difficult times. So you know previously you might have felt um, a lot worse than what you feel right now so there's that comparison. Sometimes we would compare ourselves dealing with a particular situation right now um, as opposed to how we would have dealt with it in the past. So we're looking at that, we're looking at that in much more detail. So here's some more ideas about how we use comparison. So we compare how we're feeling now to a time when we felt different. We might think about people coping the same as us or less well than us and that's one of the comparisons. Now what we tend to find in our skills training group because in the groups we have people at different stages of skills training those that are joining um, the group as novices in many many ways as, as new learners often gain additional experience from those who have of using the skills from those who have been in skills training longer than them and what tends to happen sometimes is that that person who's been in the group longer instills hope in those that are just starting out. So we'll often hear group members say, um, I really want to be like you when I get to this that stage of this skills training. So there's that comparison straight away. Um, so it, it often can work to instill hope. So comparisons is about comparing ourselves to those who may be less fortunate than us and these are the ones that are a little bit more difficult for people to um, actually engage with. We can watch reality shows about others, tr other people's troubles or um, soaps. Soaps are very good um, and they make us feel that, you know, although we feel as if things are absolutely awful and dire for us at the moment, other people are in difficult situations and we are not as bad as that. So comparisons is often a difficult skill to, to work with, um, but if you can do it, and can, it can be a really helpful and beneficial um, distraction strategy. So another distraction strategy is to accept with different emotions. So what we would do, we would engage in activities that help us generate different emotions, that help us to distract from the current situation and the levels of distress of the current emotions. So first of all, what we need to do though is work out what is that current emotion that we are actually experiencing right now. Because until we can, until we do that, we're not going to be able to engage in an activity that generates or reinforces an alternative alternative emotion. So really think about what that emotion actually is that would that we're wanting to um, move away from. So how do we do it? We would do things like, the activities would include things like reading books that would generate different emotions. So, um, you know, that concentration, we can sometimes really get into the characters of that book. We could watch a comedy show or a comedy video. Um, a favourite of mine is, you know, go around a supermarket or go around a shop and read some funny birthday cards. We don't have to buy them, we just need to read them to help us to change that emotion. We could listen to some lively or listen to some soothing music whichever emotion we're trying to move away from um, we could watch a scary movie and one of the best therapies is to have a laugh with some friends now that could be over the telephone or that could be in person so there are lots of activities and again think about what different activities you could engage in to um, distract using a different emotion so what is that different emotion that we're looking for um, a further skill is distracting with wise mind accepts through pushing away. So pushing away, by pushing away we mean we're pushing away from painful situations and this can either be done physically by either leaving the situation or by in our imagination whereby we block it in our mind. Now when we leave the situation physically this breaks the actual contact with the emotional cues. When we block it, 
This is all about making that conscious effort to obstruct the thoughts and the images and the urges associated with those negative emotions and urges towards destructive behaviours. Now blocking shouldn't be generally the first technique that we would try um, but it can be useful in an emergency as, as with all and sorry and as with all of the crisis survival skills we need to make sure that we take care not to overuse this one because blocking is um, very easy to access and very easy to overuse so we really do need to be aware of that. So what sort of activities do we um, engage in to, to work with pushing away? Well, like I've said, we push away by physically leaving the situation or leaving it mentally. Um, some people build an imaginary wall between yourself and the situation. Um, we could put ourselves in an imaginary room that takes us away from that situation. Sometimes if we notice ourselves ruminating over those thoughts and over those emotions, we can actually shout out no so that we're actually stopping it and we're making that conscious effort to push that away. Another one when there's painful memories or distressing memories or distressing thoughts and emotions is to put that pain in a box. Now sometimes I will say, you know what, just put that pain in a box and what I want you to do is tape it up and put it on a shelf or better still, in a loft, out of the way. So we're actually pushing it away and it's out of the way. Okay. We can also um, distract using other thoughts. So when we distract using other thoughts, again, this is where, if you think back to the beginning, we're filling up our short-term memory so that the thoughts that are activated with the negative emotion don't continue to react to, don't continue to reactivate that emotion. So distracting with other thoughts actually shifts our attention away from the negative emotions, the related thoughts and the related urges. So we do that again by things like counting to 10. In fact, you can count absolutely anything. We can count colours in a picture. We can count, I know people sometimes count ceiling tiles, floor tiles. Um, anything that is around you that can be counted, count it. You could repeat the words of a song in your mind. Um, and sometimes the songs could be poignant songs and important songs to you. But there could also be songs like Old MacDonald Had a Farm because that really will help to distract your thoughts from those destructive ones. We could do word puzzles or dot to dot puzzles. You know, word searches are excellent because we, we tend to really then try to focus in. And dot to dot puzzles, um, I don't know about you, but when I'm doing a dot to dot, I'm trying to work out what is the picture going to be? What, what picture is going to emerge from this page? Um, and then finally, again, we can distract using thoughts by watching TV and watching things on TV, which again could be comedy shows or something that um, really takes our attention away from the distress that we're feeling right now. And finally, the um, distraction technique of the S in Wise Mind Accepts is with other sensations. Now, what we want here is we want intense, different sensations because they are the ones that shift our attention away from the emotional distress and associated crisis urges. And you may have come across some of these within the tip skill. So we can use some of the five senses for this, um, uh, particularly those associated with touch and taste, hearing as well as smell. Um, I'm not so sure how intense we can be with visual things, but you know, give it a go. If you can find something where you can use your vision to be um, to change those intense sensations, then I would really love to hear what sort of things you would engage in. So the activities that we could engage in here when we're looking at the sensations are things like holding ice in your hand or in your mouth. But please cover that ice with something so that you don't burn yourself because that's the last thing we want. We don't want you to burn yourself with ice. We don't want it sticking to your skin. When we're working with hearing, we could listen to loud music. We could squeeze a rubber ball really, really hard. Things like standing in the rain or in the snow is another um, way of using those sensations. Taking a hot or a cold shower can change those sensations. And when we're looking at smell, 
what we want to be doing is smelling something that's quite pungent so things like smelling salts or albus oil so that you get a good smell and a quick smell of that okay now I mentioned earlier that it might be helpful to have a, a piece of paper where you can write down some of the things that you think would be really really useful what we do within the group is what we have we have what we call distraction boxes and we encourage you to um, have a box that you can put things in that you can actually pick up um, and go with those activities now the activities you know sometimes we can put physical things in there so we could put that rubber ball in there we could put a bottle of olive oil in there and things like that now when we're looking at activities it's very difficult to put um, hang out the washing in there and sometimes we have um, a little box within a box and that might have pieces of paper or pieces of card that actually set your set activities for you to do when you're feeling in that crisis situation and you don't know whether you're coming or going and you don't know what to do next so what you would do is pick out a piece of paper within that box and it might say clean out a cupboard or it might say empty a drawer or it might say lie on the floor with your legs against the wall so it's different things for different people um, so I really would encourage you to work with um, thinking about what activities what things can you put in that box that can help you access those accept skills quickly yeah so work on that work on that with other people work on it with family members and just think about what could go in that box because sometimes just looking at that box will give you an idea of what you could do and when we get to that skills overload point those boxes are really really helpful in helping us to survive those crisis situations using your wise mind accept skills um, without making things worse okay so what we need to do here really with this skill as with all of the other skills is to practice that skill so I want you to practice the accept skills um, and as I said earlier what we need to hear is worksheets 5, 5a and 5b these provide three different ways to record your accept skills practice and again worksheet 5 is a good starter worksheet for those of you who are just trying to shape um, yourselves into more frequent skills practice 5a allows you to practice each skill twice and 5b gives multiple opportunities for each skill and don't forget what you're actually doing here you are building up your toolbox so please keep building that toolbox and filling that toolbox um, with things that you are likely to engage in okay so I would like to thank you for watching this video clip and I hope that you found it useful please practice this skill and I wish you every success with it I would love to hear how you get on with the um, distracting with accept wise mind accept skills so please please feel free to leave some comments or some feedback and I'm sure build up that toolbox because it is such um, an integral part and it's such a useful box to have so I'd like to thank you for now uh, thank you very much and to say bye for now and I wish you all the very best with the skills training